and so they uh, they ask Virgil, who was uh, probably a Celt from Mantova, to write uh, the history of Rome. And uh, like uh, it was mm, typical of the time, since uh, uh, the gods, uh, the Greek gods, uh, were uh, the uh, the basic for uh, the. Um, uh, religion of, of the time, uh, of course, uh, this history had to be traced back to the Greek gods. And, um, and so here is the uh, incipit of, uh, or the beginning of the, of the Virgil Eneid. Um, it uh, kind of mirrors the Iliad of Homer the Iliad being uh, uh, the foundational book of the uh, ancient Greek, ancient uh, Greeks uh, um, culture and history. And so it's a, an invocation to the muse, to the goddess, uh, um, to, um, to, to, to the goddess. And uh, I think of arms and the man, he who exiled by fate uh, first came from the coast of Troy to Italy and to Lavinian shores uh, hurled about endlessly by land and sea, by the will of the gods, by cruel Juno, remorseless anger, long suffering also in war until he founded a city and brought his gods to Latinum. From that, the Latin people came the lords of L'Alba Longa, the walls of noble Rome. So it's very, I mean, if you're familiar with the Iliads, it's very, very similar in tone. And uh, it's uh, in, uh, in those few lines, basically uh, collects uh, what, uh, what is gonna be the, um, the, the history of Rome. Um, the, why do we start like this? Because the legend and reality of the foundation of Rome are really intertwined. They are really uh, connected with each other. And therefore, sometimes you lose the boundary of what is true and what is uh, a, fa a fable. But, but remember that to every fable, there is always something true. Fables always uh, are sometimes based on true, on reality, on truth. So, uh, okay. Uh, uh, sorry, the connection is not good. Okay. It freezes sometimes my computer. Okay, uh, slide four. Okay, so we begins with this journey that the, in, that the introduction is talking about. What journey? The journey of Aeneas. Aeneas is uh, a hero, a Greek hero, actually uh, is uh, not necessarily a Greek, is, is from Greece, but is not really a Greece, is a Trojan. Uh, Troy is uh, uh, a city that has been fighting against the Greeks for uh, almost 10 years. And the accounts, as you know, they are, uh, uh, well, if you're not, if you don't know, I'm telling you, the accounts of this long story are written in the Iliad that I was mentioning before by Homer. So it's a very, uh, it's been a very long, uh, they've been 10 very long years and gruesome years, a lot of battles, a lot of, the gods are fighting in heaven, like, uh, and they are using the, the, the humans like little puppets. And uh, well, eventually the Troy lose. And uh, it's Troy is destroyed by, you know, the cunning of another Greek hero, Odysseus, or uh, I'm sure you, some of you already know. And, uh, and so around 1250 before Christ, uh, Troy is in flame, is basically burning down to the ashes. And uh, Aeneas, who's the, uh, who's the son of Aphrodite, the goddess, uh, thanks to his mother, she, he's able to escape. He escapes with his wife, Creusa, and uh, his son, uh, 
uh, Ascanius and uh, is carrying his older father on his shoulder, um, um, Anchise. Uh, unfortunately, during the, the travels, he will lose his wife. And so after a long journey and a lot of adventures uh, around uh, uh, the Mediterranean, because Juno, the goddess, uh, the wife of Jupiter, uh, is very angry and doesn't like uh, Aeneas for a number of things. Uh, number one, he's the son of Aphrodite, which she's always in competition with, the goddess of love and beauty. And uh, Aeneas is uh, a Trojan, so that's another reason why she doesn't uh, uh, support him. And, um, and, uh, and on the other hand, is because she sees that eventually, if Aeneas is successful in his uh, finding a new land and a new country, he will, this new country, this new uh, town that he will build, uh, will destroy his, her favorite uh, town, which is Carthago. And so that's why he, she's very, um, uh, she's not helping me at all. But eventually he arrives on the shore of today Lazio and there he meets the Latins, the uh, population that live there, i Latini. And uh, he marries the king's daughter, Lavinia, and uh, it starts uh, a generation. And eventually, because at the time people, they weren't friendly very often to each other, they start fighting among themselves. They pretty much will fight all of their lives and, and for many, 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 many centuries. And eventually he dies in war. Okay. Okay, I went to, ah, uh, okay. So, uh, well, and he is dead. His son Ascanio, uh, later when he, when he grows up uh, and he decides to find, to found a new, a new town, uh, Albalonga. Albalonga mm, today doesn't exist anymore but uh, scholars, archaeologists uh, have probably found that the place uh, is on the uh, nearby the Lake Albano, which is a volcanic lake, and uh, where uh, is today the city of Castel Gandolfo. And um, again, Ascanio becomes old, dies, etc. And uh, his progeny are ruling now Albalonga. And here is when the legend begins. Numitore and uh, Amulio are two of his sons, but as often is the case with legend, and we have uh, a lot of books that talk about brothers not really loving each other, uh, well, they end up fighting and a, a brother end up, ends up being more uh, uh, cruel or more cunning, shrewd than the other. And so he managed to overthrow his brother uh, Numitore and uh, takes uh, over the, the throne. But of course, before doing that, he makes sure to kill all his uh, nephews, uh, except for his niece, Rea Silvia, who he decided well to send uh, with the Vestali, which were uh, um, kind of a um, nuns or, be or better yet, uh, uh, priestess. And they were uh, virgins, of course, uh, and uh, they also jo enjoy quite some influence uh, on, uh, on later on on Roman society. And, um, and, uh, and so, well, the, obviously the, the girl is not really thrilled with the idea of, you know, going into, uh, in, uh, in, in, a, in a monastery becoming priestess, but she has no choice. And uh, one day, uh, while she's uh, quietly asleep uh, on the shores uh, of the Tiber River, the god of war, Mars, uh, the handsome and uh, uh, beautiful sea man that he is, and uh, he, and lover that he is also, he sees her, and, uh, and uh, while she's asleep, she actually seduces her. 
um, and obviously making her pregnant with uh, twins. So <clears throat> Ria, Ria Silvia gives birth to two to, uh, boys, two twins uh, called Romulus and Remus. But, well, uh, it's a still a small society and you can't keep secrets. So his, uh, her uncle, her uncle actually uh, finds out and uh, he immediately orders the twins to be killed. But the servant who is supposed to carry out this plan takes pity on the, the, the poor boys and so puts them into baskets and uh, place the basket on the river and just let the river flow them, hoping that eventually fate would help them or uh, otherwise decide their destiny. But the god of the river, Ty, uh, Tiberinus, uh, takes pity on the boys and uh, also because these are not special children, these children are also the son of a god. And Marx makes sure to, to actually help babies. Uh, by the way, the uncle also ordered a Silvia to be killed uh, because uh, she was supposed to have vowed, vowed it to chastity and basically um, uh, did not follow this rule. And so by not following this rule, you were basically banned uh, and actually you're, uh, you're the, you were actually supposed to, to die if you had uh, a marital or, a, or, an, or, or, a, or a relationship. So, but eventually what happens is that the basket uh, um, is actually, thanks to the, the help of this divine intervention, um, arrives ashore. And uh, the legend goes on to say that a wolf, hearing the, the cries of these babies, come and helps her, it helps the babies and takes them it takes them to their to her cave, the Lupercal cave, which also it's uh, another um, become an important uh, place or symbol for the Romans. Okay. So well, the babies eventually. Uh, oh, and also the uh, the Lupa. Sorry, this is the Lupa Capitolina would also become a symbol of Rome. As a matter of fact, if you go to Rome or if you go in any city in Italy that was founded by Romans, you will most often find this, uh, this symbol. And, uh, oh, by the way, sorry, I forgot to point uh, out, uh, just look at the artwork. These, every slide I accompanied with uh, an artwork that are actually, you can actually see in Italy in the different museums. Well, the babies eventually are found by real humans. A shepherd walking by the cave where, uh, where the babies are, so the Lupercal uh, Luperca, uh, cave. So a shepherd named Faustulus, or Faustulo in Italian, sees these two babies and decided to take them home to his wife, Acca Larentia. And they decide to adopt the babies and grow them as their own. Uh, but mm, uh, there is something, you know, uh, the National Enquirer write something about Acca Laurentia. Mm, this lupa thing, this wall thing, well, there was uh, lupa was generally a symbol of prostitution. And the National Enquirer says that Acca Laurentia was not so faithful to her husband. And, um, and so there is probably these babies were actually the lupa were probably, uh, was probably a symbol, a symbol for a woman that actually raised them. But in any case, Romulus and Remo grow up 
And uh, well, they decide to go to visit the city of Alba Longa because after all, Alba Longa is one of the biggest town uh, in the area, very prosperous and uh, growing. And then they happen to find out that, uh, well, this king, Amulius, is their uncle and he has overthrown their dad. So they kill the uncle and they put uh, their father, the rightful uh, king, back on the throne. And uh, their father decides to give them also the permission to move on and build their own town. Well, so what happens? Romolo, and I think there is another familiarity here. Again, we have two brothers and uh, once again, we have them fighting among the, each other. Well, Romolo, wants to call the new city Rome. And he wants to build it on the hill called the Palatine. Um, but Remo, no, he doesn't agree. He wants to call it the Remora or Remuria, and he wants to build it on the Aventino, another hill nearby. So obviously a dispute and a fight between the two brother, brothers uh, begins. And uh, they decided, okay, Romolo decided to cut a grove between the, between the two hills. And, uh, and then, uh, well, which hill is gonna to take to be, you know, the new town? Well, they decided to remit it to the uh, Auguri. Auguri were omens and uh, were basically, uh, uh, kind of uh, hmm, rights uh, or uh, not really a rights, but uh, something that they would decide by, oh, again, what, let's see what happens. Uh, uh, like, you know, twisting, uh, like today we do like twisting a coin and decided head or tail. And uh, at the time, uh, these uh, taking the auspices, as it was called, uh, was based on birds. Uh, or uh, so where people would basically watch the sky and see what would happen in the sky and, uh, and counting, you know, the birds uh, that would, you know, of course in the sky at the time, only birds were flying and uh, <laughs> this, that they were big enough to be counted, being able to count. And so uh, they decide that to count birds and see who counts most birds in, uh, in a certain time. Well, Romulus, actually Remus, is the one who sees first uh, uh, the fir first birds and he counts six and so his people declare him the victory. But Romulus uh, actually counts 12 uh, vultures, uh, they were vultures, and therefore Romulus win. Again, this doesn't settle the fight between them and once again Romulus, another brother, happens to kill another brother and therefore, uh, Remus is dead. Romulus become the new king, and he founds uh, the new city of Rome. And uh, you can see it, it's right there. It's also called uh, Roma Quadrata or Roma Squared. And it's uh, the year 753 before Christ, April 21st. In fact, Italy, uh, Rome, uh, about less than a month ago, celebrated 2,270 uh, 2, something birthday. Well, this is the end of the legend. Uh, but um, intermission, because, well, this is the original le legend that it's been uh, uh, transmitted uh, down from generation and it's the, oh, but there are many other legends. One is by uh, Strabo, sorry, I made a mistake there. Uh, there is another one by uh, Dionysus of Helicarnus and many others, but they all uh, basically end up uh, setting the foundation of Rome around the 21st of April, 753 before Christ. And uh, it's where ab urbe condita from the founding of Rome. 
something that they all have in common, these uh, myths, uh, these legends, is again that they always tr they they always use Greek mythology. They always have Greek uh, <coughs> Greek elements in them. And somehow, so there is always a connection with ancient Greeks, which also makes sense, perfect sense, because the Greek uh, had uh, also colonized uh, part of uh, southern Italy, uh, was part of the famous Magna Grecia, and uh, the, the city of Naples was indeed uh, a Greek town. And Naples and Rome are about an hour away from each other, so it makes perfect sense that the Greeks actually made it all the way to the shore of where today is Rome. Well, what is though is the historical and archeological evidence? Well, we begin around 30,000 years ago, <laughs> but uh, we will move very fast. So uh, there are historical records, archeological records that Italy was inhabited and there were human settlements uh, during the Stone Age. Uh, then about 8,000 years ago, so 5,000 years before Rome was founded, it's the Neolithic area. And uh, the region of the north, uh, two populations from the north, actually one from the north, the Ligurians, and in today, not today, Liguria. Liguria is actually a region of Italy, uh, Genoa. It's actually this region over here. And uh, the Siculi from Sicily, so uh, from the south, uh, and probably population of Celts, because the Celts uh, are these tribes that are all over Europe's, uh, Europe, um, they actually uh, start moving from north to south towards, uh, uh, to uh, so occupy uh, or colonize these, uh, this area. Then about 2000 years before BC, uh, more Celts, uh, so more population and tribes from Central and uh, Northern Europe move into Northern Italy and uh, create settlements uh, all around uh, this area. And of course, the people are still coming also from the sea. Uh, well, the Celts uh, were not famous uh, for being uh, quiet, uh, uh, and uh, uh, loving and, uh, you know, peace-making people. They were very feisty and uh, everywhere they went, uh, they uh, always uh, made war or uh, quarrels, let's call them quarrels with their neighbors. The only instance in which the Celts had actually a relationship uh, was the Etruscans. The Etruscan is the only people that managed to um, collaborate with the Celts. But the Etruscans were very, very uh, clever, very, uh, uh, very advanced civilization, and they hardly fought. In fact, the Romans, uh, at one point, they are the only people that the Romans also didn't fight with, the new, the new Latins, because they kind of, um, uh, they kind of uh, decided to, uh, uh, it was better for them to adopt them than fight them because, as I said, they were advanced. Uh, um, by the way, there's someone who doesn't have their uh, volume down. Anyway, uh, continuing on, so the uh, villages uh, that are found uh, in, uh, in this period are uh, what you can see, um, uh, dwelling, uh, pile dwelling, steel houses, and uh, well, so even then, uh, the George Clooney of the time uh, have discovered the lake areas. Um, and so they uh, decided that where the most set, they mostly settled were the lake areas, the lakes, Lago Maggiore, Lago di Garda, Lago di Como, and so on. Uh, eventually, these people, though, from the north decided to move uh, south and uh, the, they still build the same type of uh, steel houses, but this time they have also managed to build them over uh, dry land. 
uh, we are in the Iron Age at this point, uh, and so we, the, the archaeologists uh, and anthropologists, divide them between civilization that they uh, bury their dead, and these are the one uh, in yellow, and uh, the civilization that they actually um, incinerate, so they burn their dead. Uh, which are the areas in uh, green uh, and uh, and red, and um, they uh, in, in custom age what they engage is basically husbandry farming. They actually begin uh, fabric weaving. This is uh, the beginning also of fabric weaving. Uh, fabric weaving. They build fences around their villages, and. Uh, the um, this particularly new tribe called the Villanovians uh, that gives rise to this new civilization called the Villanovian Villanovian settlement is in Bologna, my town, or actually the the capital of my region, I should say. And uh, and for um, several uh, uh, centuries they will settle in this area. And in the, in the meantime, since we are at the Iron Age, they have new toys like uh, axes, knives, so they learn to work uh, uh, iron. So the Villanovia, Villanovians, at one point, they begin to move south. They begin to move south and they settled uh, around uh, the rivers, around the Tiber. And uh, most likely the other tribes, uh, people that live in the area where Rome eventually was founded, the Umbrians, the Sabinian, the Latins, were nothing more than Villanovians uh, because historian archeologists uh, have found that probably in terms of uh, race, culture, they were very much alike. Well, in fact, and exactly, and, and, and with the others, what do they do? Are they fighting and, and they're killed like barbarians used to do at the time? So they are a good fellow and they party, so they have nice relationship and they exchange, they mingle, they get married together. Um, they, oh, or the Villanovians take over. So that's uh, probably all of these things happen at the same time. So they absorbed each other, they split into groups, uh, they fought with each other, but at the same time they exchange, uh, they farm, they married, and, uh, and so on. And uh, by the year 1000 BC, uh, well, the Tiber is very, very crowded with a lot of uh, different people. And uh, again, uh, um, uh, the, um, uh, there are a lot of, again, quarrels, uh, wars uh, for the control of the resources. Uh, the only time that they not fight is when they have though, to celebrate a, a religious festivity, which it's a lot of them really share the same uh, re uh, religion or the same uh, religious celebrations, uh, or when they are uh, frightened by uh, by um, by an enemy coming from outside. Well, um, here is a map of uh, what probably Italy looked like before uh, Romulus uh, founded the city of Rome. So you can see it's uh, uh, it's uh, a sprawling of uh, of different. Uh, civilization or different uh, people with different customs and yes you can see this area it's full of different uh, people of different uh, uh, people of with you know so the very living close to each other the city of Alba Longa the one that Ascanius had found uh, the, 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 the legend says was uh, very uh, was the biggest and most powerful city and uh, again it's close. It's today by the uh, Lake Albano, uh, Castel Gandolfo, which is the residence of the Pope uh, in the summertime. 
And, uh, but what happens is that a group of, uh, of uh, men that lives in Alba Longa, so descendant of uh, uh, Ascanio, decide to move uh, uh, and, and try to find, uh, to, to, and, and try to build a new city, a new town. It's only men, it's about a hundred men, and uh, later I will see if you're paying attention because I'm not going to tell you why it's only men. <laughs> um, and so they migrated only, uh, they migrated 10 kilometers uh, to the north. And, uh, and that's what uh, the rest is again, uh, uh, history. So these hundred men move uh, to the north uh, and uh, they found in this new city and it's April the 21st, uh, 753 before Christ. And uh, this is also accounted by the uh, ancient Roman scholar and author, Marcus Terentius, uh, Terentius Varro, that uh, also uh, in one of his, one of the early history of Rome uh, traces the origin, the founding uh, uh, of Rome around this date. Obviously, there is, um, the scholars are not necessarily agreeing with this date, and there is a lot of uh, uh, sort of controversy around the precise date, because uh, uh, Romans, uh, uh, depending uh, who, for uh, well, Romans depending on who was uh, the, the king or monarch, sometimes they would actually rewrite their own history, and they would start counting uh, uh, the. They would start counting from the beginning of that new ruler, um, the 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 origin of their town. And, uh, but the hundred men uh, will go back again to another legend because there's no, uh, will bring us back to another legend because there is no historical record uh, for that. So we are uh, left with that. So here we go back to, that's what Rome uh, at the eve of its foundation probably looked like. You can see again, uh, uh, this was the area of the famous uh, squared. And these are all the hills that, uh, that are surrounding uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Tiber in this particular place. And um, uh, each it's occupied by different settlement of different people. And uh, most likely what happens is that there is uh, uh, a, great, a, a gradual fusion of all of these tribes and people, you know, uh, getting together. And, um, and uh, also all of these villages fall, form, uh, forming what uh, it was also known in the beginning as the Sept uh, Septim Monium, Septimontium, Septim well, seven hills basically. And so the seven hills on which today uh, Rome, uh, uh, or that constituted the first nucleus of Rome, uh, the Palatine, the Aventine, Capitoline, Esquiline, Quirinal, Viminal, and Chilium uh, basically united, fused together. And um, Mm, again, uh, uh, it's been uh, scholars believe that therefore a uh, person, someone called Romulus, really existed, and Romulus so was probably the uh, the promoter of uh, this fusion. Um, uh, huts have been found dating back to this uh, period have been found on the Palatine Hill. Uh, more archaeological uh, evidence uh, of the early founding of Rome is found in the Fori Imperiali. And uh, there is an area under uh, the Fori Imperiali, which was uh, for quite some time close to the public, but now it's um, um, the public can actually visit. 
and uh, it's called the lapis niger or the black stone and this is uh, a picture of the exterior of uh, of the place and it was a sacred area of uh, uh, of rome or in the forum the forum was built at originally uh, where uh, romulus and remo the legend says they were uh, abandoned by or they were yeah they they were abandoned or the, the basket arrived and they were uh, raised by the by the uh, uh, wolf and uh, and uh, and so <clears throat> Um, and, and, and well, uh, and so this area basically um, excavation has brought excavation has actually brought to light um, more uh, chambers uh, or the 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 remains uh, of a previous construction, and some people have actually. Uh, uh, scholars, archaeologists have uh, thought that probably this was the place where Romulus was buried. Uh, at the very beginning, there is an inscription that, uh, which also was very common at the time, well, certainly with the Egyptian pyramid, that was uh, uh, cursing everybody who would adventure to, uh, uh, that would dare to cross uh, the wall or the door and uh, venture inside. And um, uh, well, what is, was uh, amazing, and again, legend and truth uh, mingle again, uh, was that the archeologists uh, found that, okay, in this particular area, there are springs of sulfurous water. And uh, one of the legends says that Romulus was able to be successful uh, in one of the wars uh, with uh, a nearby tribe because the gods uh, came to help, uh, Jupiter came and helped them uh, because all of a sudden very hot uh, and smelly water arise from the soil and uh, change the turn of the war in favor of Romulus. So again, uh, it's, a, it's another instance in which uh, legend actually meets with uh, with uh, uh, reality. <clears throat> and um, it, as I said, it was closed for quite some time, but uh, it's actually, you can, we can actually visit it. And, um, and this is the end. So this is the end of the presentation. Um, so mm, uh, I want to tell you again about a hundred uh, men. Well, here it and it's related to this tribe, the Sabins. Basically, uh, so we have these uh, these men who found these cities, but well, they need to find women to make uh, children so that they can leave this new city to, uh, to their progeny. And so the legend goes of the kidnapping of the Sabine's daughters. Um, supposedly from an historical uh, record, uh, the early Romans, uh, the, the Sabines were actually, the Sabines were very uh, strong and powerful uh, uh, tribes and they really fought very hard to maintain uh, their independence or actually take over, become them the leaders. But they eventually lost to, to the Romans. But in, in the end, uh, uh, they, so legend and truth, they probably in the end uh, made a deal with the Romans. Uh, and uh, the deal was that they became for a, for a short time uh, uh, leaders or at the or of the of the area uh, at the same time, and in and, and that chiseled that this uh, or cemented sorry cemented this relationship was the fact that the Romans married the daughter with of the Sabines, and uh, uh, they would be equal 
you know, in uh, leading this area until the king of the Sabin, with which they had originally made a deal, dies, and then eventually the Romans would uh, would uh, uh, be the Romans, and that's uh, uh, you know this the beginning of Rome. Uh, and eventually they will, uh, you know, begin uh, what will become uh, first uh, the Republic and, uh, well, first the monarchy, later the Republic, and then the empire that we all know. And uh, it will last for uh, almost, almost seven, 700 years, the longest, uh, one of the longest empires of, uh, of, uh, of history. Okay, this ends the presentation. If you have uh, questions, I could take uh, some questions. And uh, well, I put some uh, reference readings. I could send it to you if you send me your email. Um, uh, for, um, but there are some uh, wonderful sites uh, on, uh, on the history of Rome. Okay. Uh, yes. Hello, my name is Tiziana, and you can see me because I just realized that this webinar was going on and I'm not presentable, but, and I also came in late, so I apologize for that. But thank you so much for um, your presentation and what I heard was really interesting. So I have a couple of questions. Um, so first of all, um, I'm wondering if you could send us this presentation and you said that you can send us the bibliography, um, which is great. Um, but I'm wondering whether you could send the whole presentation. Uh, that's question number one. And question number two is how do we contact you if we just write to Fondazione Italia or directly to you? Um, my third question was about the um, Ratto delle Sabine. So was it? Um, I, I'm not quite sure I understood correctly. So did this really happen or was it just a legend of the Romans slowly uh, integrating with the Sabins, Sabins, I'm not sure how to pronounce them. Um, and eventually they got these women for, for them to, you know, just start a, a population in the city. So that's my uh -huh. question. I'm not sure if that is really happened. I thought uh -huh. that really happened, but I'm not sure if from what present if from your presentation, maybe you're saying that that was just what what legend made out of it. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. Um, in order, <laughs> uh, question number one was uh, okay. You can contact. Def I think okay uh, to answer question number one and number two. Yeah, you can contact Fondazione Italia to get my uh, name and number. Uh, and uh, also, I think that the presentation would probably posted, uh, because I have recorded it, uh, would be posted on our site, uh, so you can definitely access uh, the, the uh, presentation there. And going back to the Ratto delle Sabine, the kidnapping of the Sabine, uh, it's really legend. It's really a legend that, uh, that the Romans uh, invited over the Sabine actually for a party. Oh yeah, we wanna, you know, have a, a nice party. We are neighbors, so let's get over and have a drink and a couple of barbecue pork and whatever. Uh, and uh, oh, and by the way, uh, remember to bring your daughters along and um, so that's how the, key, the legend is really uh, portrayed, or it's really accounted. But um, probably it was more though, uh, like, uh, like I said, uh, there was uh, uh, a deal that was made uh, or a good relationship that eventually, that eventually was, uh, was, uh, was established. So, but, but yeah, the, the the story the, the story is more counted in terms of the legend so uh the, the legend really makes uh, uh, clear how this uh, relationship sort of happened but probably probably it was uh, i i would assume that uh, uh, at the time the rela relationship between you know between tribes uh, were very different uh, from uh, or not very different really from uh, later, from other time in history. So I hope that answered the question. 
Yes, yes, thank you. And okay. if you wouldn't mind telling me your name. My name is uh, Antonella, A-N-T-O-N-E-L-L-A, O-D-D-I, actually. You can see I had written it here. Antonella Odi, okay, Antonella perfect. Antonella Odi, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, here I have, uh, I would love to, uh, okay. All right. Uh, probably what I would do is I would send the bibliography to Fondazione to put it on the, on the site so that you can access access it well any any other uh question si good morning buongiorno Antonella. buongiorno it's clara clara gath uh-huh um i totally my husband and i totally enjoyed your presentation and you make it so uh, it's just so exciting stimulating when you give the stories um at the end, you made a comment that it went from a monarchy to something, to something, to something. I, I would like to write that sequence down. Okay, so it goes to, uh, it goes to uh, a monarchy. Uh -huh. okay, again, and here, oh, and here again, we have legend versus reality. Sure, sure. So, or, or, oh, well, no, <clears throat> legend and history at the same time. Uh, the history comes out, uh, comes down that uh, there were uh, the first seven, ki seven kings. So it's the monarch period. Uh -huh. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, the last kings being Etruscans uh, and being ruthless. Um, and, uh, and then we go, so from the monarchy, then because the last uh, Etruscan, uh, uh was very was very ruthless there would be a revolt of the civilian revolt which would overthrow uh will overthrow the kings and the republic gets republic. established okay. the republic okay. and then we go from the republic to remember julius caesar's anyone <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we will go from the republic to the empire to empire. empire. Okay. Yes. Thank you. The Republic is also very interesting. In fact, uh, uh, I it would be kind of nice to continue with this series now that I started yeah. <laughs> and um, and go, you know, look at each area, uh, uh, you know, uh, look at each area, uh, each uh, uh time each period it, it, that would be great antonella oh i'm sorry uh, clara uh, are you finished with your question yes i i was just gonna say thank you for the answer it's wonderful Continue. okay i'll mute i'll mute now um i guess i had a picture uh of uh, rome of the early settlement of rome what it must have looked like uh, but I, I changed it because I introduced uh, the Lapis uh, Niger. Uh, there is also another site in Rome uh, that uh, uh, it's, um, and now I don't remember the name, I can send that to. Uh, it's another site in Rome uh, where uh, it's, um, it's probably, uh, it's, it's a testimony of the beginning of Rome. It's the beginning of Rome. So there are several areas well, obviously, when we go to Rome, we always go to the main site, but in the Four Imperiali, but Four Imperiali, well, in fact, the Four Imperiali, well, the, the Four Imperiali, be, it's an expansion of the original forum, by the way. It's an expansion of the original forum. And, uh, and we're supposedly, in fact, uh, the Romulus and Remus were grown up and uh and where the tree of uh of uh, uh, a vine for wine and a tree of oil were also an olive tree were were planted because wine and olive oil were sacred to the romans so <clears throat> could, could, um, could you quickly give us the um 
um, history, the, the framework, the historical framework of the monarchy, the, the monarchy, republic and empire. When did the republic start and end and when did the uh, uh, empire start it? With, with, yeah. With well, <laughs> That's uh, um, that's a very good question, but uh, uh, eventually, uh, well, if you again, if you maybe if you give me your uh, if you write me if you give me your uh, email, I can send it to you uh, um, privately. I can answer you privately because it's actually a little long to to. Oh, sure. It's a Tiziana dot punto casa. Uh, can you write it in the chat? Can you write? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I have a question. Do you, this is Halinka Novak. Do you make this presentation, you say you're not a historian, you're also an Italian teacher. Do you use this presentation in some of your Italian classes? And if so, which ones? <laughs> well, the Italian classes that uh, we have uh, are language classes, and so I primarily teach uh, uh, language. So, okay. the, yeah, this is the uh, uh, this is uh, yeah this is the um, um, it's 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 a lesson uh, in itself. So the language classes that we do, we though we do uh, teach language, and of course we also teach culture. So depending on the on the on the class and the level, we always introduce uh, you know uh, elements uh, of uh, of of culture. So, grazie Tiziana. Thank you, grazie. Um, yeah, our um, classes uh, we 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 yeah, we teach Italian. And uh, through Italian, we also teach you the, the culture, the history, the art, uh, the uh, uh, literature, uh, music, uh, opera. So, um, any other question? Um, I would just uh, again wanted to uh, point out uh, again then uh, to the uh, artwork. Um, in, I thought it was uh, very fascinating that, uh, or uh, not fascinating because I'm, I'm kind of used to it, uh, but I thought it particularly beautiful that I could accompany this presentation uh, with each moment uh, of the story with a painting. Uh, because uh, this also goes to show how this story uh, was embedded uh, in uh, not just uh, uh, the it culture of Italy for the rest of uh, Italy history, but also for Europe, uh, because most of the painting that I showed you were actually by Rubens, uh, or, or some anyway, happened to be. But in any case, you not know, just... Uh, uh, well, I, 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 Rubens is one, but many, basically many other painters in, uh, in, uh, in the history of art uh, really uh, uh, painting this story of uh, these legends. So not just the stories from the Bible, but also the Bible being, you know, from, because then eventually Christianity was a big, uh, a big, uh, uh, deal for Europe, uh, and so then the, the Bible took takes over uh, the the story of the Bible takes over in uh, representation in the figurative arts, uh, but also this legend. Uh, and uh, okay, this is a mosaic uh, representing uh, Virgil holding his book, uh, the Aeneid. <coughs> um, uh, this is. Uh, a painting that you can see in Rome at La Galleria Borghese by Federico Barocci, The Fleeing of uh, Aeneas. <coughs> uh, this is uh, Rubens, um, Ria Silva being seduced by Mars. Oh, by the way, also <coughs> the uh, 
<coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. The, um, the free gods uh, that had a huge impact uh, on the, or the, or the free main uh, Greek gods uh, that will have a, a big impact on Romans uh, are uh, Jupiter, Juno, and, uh, and Mars. But uh, there is a plethora, a plethora of, of uh, divinities. Um, this uh, is Romulus and Remo. It's a painting, uh, again, by Rubens. And you can see it at the Pinacoteca Capitolina in Rome. This is also Roma Capitolina, uh, the, the statue, uh, no, the, the Lupa Capitolina. Um, this is a painting from uh, Nicolas Mignard. And uh, okay, so just to point this out that uh, uh, these uh, stories had uh, uh, again uh, were told and retold also through uh, works of art. Okay, any other questions? We are about to end if you have any other questions. Okay, well, I hope again you enjoyed the, uh, the presentation and uh, I hope to see you again in the future and uh, that you, uh, uh, okay, check us out. Okay. Thanks so much. That was really great. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Ciao. 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 Ciao.